Proton Pack. We all know it. We all love it. The iconic Ghostbuster technology was invented by founding members Dr. Egon Spangler and Dr. Ray Stantz in the fall of 1984, combining cutting-edge science with fringe supernatural research and forever creating cognitive dissonance in atheists and theists alike. But how does it work? The Proton Pack is an unlicensed nuclear accelerator powered by the radioactive isotope carbon-14. And just like a Twinkie, has a half-life of 5,730 years. These power cells are contained within the fuel rods inside the booster core, fueling both the proton pack and the nightmares of countless environmental protection agents. <laughs> Just kidding. We love the environment, which is why we dedicate our lives to protecting it from the destructive wrath of malevolent demigods. The fuel rods provide power to the accentuators, which regulates that power to the primary power distributor, or PPD, distributing it to the ion arm, hydrogen gas actuator, and flux capacitor. Wait, flux capacitor? Silly me. I'm getting my iconic 1980s technology mixed up. I meant cyclotron. Although some speculate that while visiting the American College of Technical Science and Complicated Math, Dr. Spengler and Dr. Stance acquired the cobalt-14 fuel rods used in the original four proton packs from Dr. Emmett Brown after he discovered they didn't provide the sufficient 1.21 gigawatts required to power his own invention. But back to the proton pack. The ion arm is the pack's brain, housing the CPU that monitors the production of protons. The hydrogen is stored within two refillable containers that each hold 20 liters of gas. The PPD provides power to the hydrogen gas actuator, sucking gas into the generator where it's ionized and is sent to the cyclotron. The cyclotron is powered by the PPD, delivering power simultaneously through the injectors that connect to the terminal at the bottom of the cyclotron and directly into the terminal at the top. Once the ionized hydrogen is pumped into the cyclotron, an oscillator alternates the current between two electrodes so that the negatively charged hydrogen is attracted to the positive electrode and repelled by the negative one, causing the particle to spiral faster and faster, as indicated by the cyclotron lights, stripping the electrons and sending an accelerated proton to the emitter officially known as the neutrona wand. However, it's referred to by different names depending on the region, such as proton gun, particle thrower, or as Canada likes to call it, that ghost hoser, eh? A neutrona wand cannot fire a particle stream until three switches are activated. The first switch turns on the oscillator, but does not pull protons from the cyclotron. For that to happen, the negative electromagnets within the wand must be activated by the second switch. These attract the protons from the cyclotron into the wand, but prevent them from discharging out the barrel. The third switch is a safety, preventing accidental discharge of the proton streams. Only when all three switches are activated is the user able to fire the proton stream. This is done by pressing the intensify trigger, reversing the polarity of the electromagnets within the wand, as well as activating a third positively charged magnet at the rear, propelling the protons forward and discharging out the barrel at an incredible velocity. The proton stream, in reality, isn't a single stream, but a two-way energy exchange, with protons shooting out and a counterflow of particles being pulled back in. But why protons? Well, after something dies, be it human, animal, plant, and on rare occasions, large cultural fads like disco or grunge, it leaves behind PKE, or psychokinetic energy. PKE has the ability to negatively charge the particles around it in order to manifest and spook the shit out of you. Let's take a look at this hydrogen atom. It consists of one proton and one electron. When it comes into contact with PKE, it is ionized, causing it to attract other ions and bond with them. Depending on the rate of attraction, it can manifest as anything, from a simple mist to shoeless Joe Jackson in a cornfield. When these apparitions interact with the physical world, they often leave behind a byproduct of negatively charged ionized particles known as ectoplasm, or as the kids call it these days, slime. This is when the protons come into play. Like an emotionally damaged individual, the negatively charged ghosts are attracted to their positively charged polar opposite, which means when a positively charged proton makes contact with the bonded negatively charged ions of a ghost, it attracts the balanced electron of the PKE, breaking down the psychokinetic energy, 
allowing that ghost to be weakened and eventually ensnared, like a toxic codependent relationship, where it can be contained within a ghost trap. How does a ghost trap work? Well, that's a lesson for another day. Until then, if you see something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters Northwest. On call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, to serve the Pacific Northwest's supernatural elimination needs. 